Hey everybody, my name is Chris Bryant. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we are in the shop and we are going to do an oil change on my 2013 Ford F-150 with a 3.5 EcoBoost. Uh, that doesn't sound very exciting, but what we're going to do is actually install an oil, uh, a bypass oil filter system. And I've seen it on a bunch of forums, seen people talk about it on diesels, but I've always wondered about it, and truthfully, if you know, I don't have my diesel running yet because I keep dragging my feet because I'm fixing everybody else's stuff. So I don't have a diesel to test this theory on. So what I'm going to do is test it on my EcoBoost. Tons of people have uh, issues with the direct injected turbo gasoline engines breaking down oil, causing uh, premature failure because the uh, fuel, from what I've heard, I don't exactly know. I've heard all kinds of things. I'm not going to act like I exactly know. But it gets fuel in the uh, oil a lot easier. You have crankcase oil that gets sucked up into the intake and causes a lot of carbon buildup. And is it the oil? Is it what the engine does with the oil? What, you know, what can you do anything to help that? Well, on this truck, I want to see about doing a bypass oil filter setup. And I went with AMS oil, and I'm running just their uh, their lower synthetic oil for now. I made a bump up to see if we can go longer on intervals. Uh, I'm going to try a bunch of stuff, but I'm going to just start off and try to get going so we can have baselines and everything. And right now, for years, it's got 114,000 miles, and for years I've always ran Motorcraft oil and a Motorcraft oil filter, what, what you're supposed to run on these. And I change every 5,000 miles. I might go over a little bit by a couple hundred miles or so. Um, I don't like to go by the oil filter minder with this system. I may learn that I can. Um, I never actually got the oil tested, but my plan with this is to first take an oil sample, package that up, get that ready. I'm going to show you, take you along with that. And then what we'll do is we'll drain the oil, we'll install the oil bypass kit, oil filter bypass kit. And then we'll fill the oil. I'll let you know how much it takes. These are pretty big filters uh, compared to what's on there. What is normally on, what's normally on these engines is an FL 500S. And you can see it's a lot smaller. So I'm going to uh, install this. I'm going to make another video along with this one that I'll probably put up uh, after is uh, one actually installing this, going over the process of installing. I'm not going to drag you through it on this video. But in this video, I'm just basically documenting, uh, showing what I'm starting out with, what I'm doing, and uh, I'll show mileage. Uh, I'll have date, the date somewhere around here. And I'll obviously this video will show the date when it goes up, so that'll be pretty good. Um, I'm just basically document everything. That way we, we have something to start with. Uh, you guys can help me. Uh, by uh, reminding me or this and that, whatever. Uh, also, I'll document what I've done at this point to start with. So we kind of have a baseline. Uh, also, at this time, I'm going to do uh, spark plugs on it. I like to do spark plugs every, you know, around 25,000. I've already done spark plugs three times in this thing, and I'm quite a bit overdue with 114,000. And with that, you want to do the spark plug, the coiled boots. Uh, these things can stretch over time, swell out, and it causes misfires. So I like to do that, and uh, I think I did it last time or the time before. So let's document the mileage, and I'll try it if I remember anything else. I'll uh, I'll update the video. But also there'll be links in in the description for this kit uh, that'll take you to Angel's website to it. I'll link that. I'll link the oil. Uh, if you, I'll probably link spark plugs, the kind of spark plugs I use too. Uh, I just use Motocraft, I, and I make sure I gap them um, to the spec. I'll throw that in there somewhere too, in case you guys own one and you need to know. Uh, I'll probably make a video just doing the tune-up on that too. I know tons of people have, but um, these 3.5 Eco EcoBoost are pretty easy to do. So, okay, let's uh, let's go check the mileage. Okay. The mileage, if you can see there, oh, it's dirty. It's 114 
926.7.7 obviously doesn't matter I need to detail the inside of this thing okay that and today's date I believe is February February 13th tomorrow's Valentine's Day which doesn't really matter it's a fake holiday exactly uh, what a bypass oil filter kit does it to me you hear bypass oil filter is it a system that bypasses oil filter no it doesn't do that exactly I don't know if you guys know so what this does is it obviously uses a primary oil filter larger so it can go longer oil goes through that filter and gets filtered properly but it'll also send oil into this larger filter here which is called the bypass oil filter and what that does is any of the oil that gets pa or goes past there in and fills up the uh, bypass oil filter this oil filter is a 2 micron and the primary filters are normally in the range of a 10 or so micron um, so it doesn't filter as much as this bypass filter so what this does is it does not filter as much as the primary, but it constantly is that engine's pumping oil, that oil pump's pumping oil. That oil is gonna get filtered down even more than the primary filter. So that way, less contaminants get put back in your engine and get passed through. And also it's filtering out that oil and it can hopefully make that oil last a lot longer. That's the whole idea of this. Uh, and on diesels primarily, you have soot buildup. That's what turns the oil black. Uh, gas engines aren't known for that. These EcoBoost, and I think other direct injection turbocharged engines are this way, um, you get a lot of gas smell. Every time I've changed this oil since new, it smells like gas. I'm not saying I can filter out the gas because obviously gas is a very thin liquid, but anything that that brings along with it is a hydrocarbon. Um, so, in my head, will that 2 micron cut down drastically and will that oil, you know, get broken down from that gasoline as quickly? I don't know. I just, I like to do things like this, try things out and just, if I can share it, that's awesome. Okay, I'm going to get started. I'm going to take a sample of the oil before I drain it out also. They recommend not taking a sample when you're draining it from that way you don't get any contamination at the bottom. They want anything suspended in the oil. So I'm gonna use this kit. I can actually, I didn't get it with this kit, but you can get a drain that goes in the end of this. That way you can take a sample from uh, the oil filter housing and fill up one of these containers and send them in. But I went ahead, I figured, hey, what the heck, I'm gonna be doing this a lot. I ordered the kit, I think it was like 25 bucks or something like that for this. These were in the 30. I'll also have, uh, I'll kind of keep an ongoing tally of how much I've spent and kind of keep track of comparing it to, you know, every oil change interval at 5,000 or so and comparing it to what I would have spent on an oil change compared to what I am spending and what I've spent total so far. You know, basically I'll find a way to document it and uh, that way I can show you guys what I've spent so far. Uh, but let's go ahead and take an oil sample, and then I'll get started with put in some on this thing. Too little for my truck. Dipstick tube out. I'm going to take a sample from there. Pretty black oil. It smells like gas. The cool thing is, is their kit, their jars, spin right into there. And this, I was messing with this before trying to figure it out looks like 
Stick that in so far, and you just tighten this up and it seals around it. Okay. Figure I want to get to the little bit lower than the dipstick, so we'll just do this. Probably be smart to mark that, but right. Let's see if this thing works or I make a mess. Nothing's happening. Oh, here comes oil. I'm going to get the camera over here. Oh, it's filling. I can see it. Slowly. Well, that's coming pretty quick. There's a little bitty line, it's hard to see. I can feel it right there. I probably need to pull that. I think that's it. Let this thing drain. It's kind of a mess. Clean this up a little bit. Get a little bit of oil on it. Make sure it's clean. Take that loose. Let's read the directions real quick. And what's cool is this kit. You buy it from Amsoil, and uh, everything, the one I bought already has a shipping label for UPS to go back. Okay, I'll make a video going over how to put one of these samples together later, because this is my first time doing it. I didn't want to mess something up and send it into them and then not be able to analyze it, and I've already gotten rid of the oil, so I want to make sure I put this together right. But it is ready to ship out. I'm going to ship it out tomorrow. I got to take it to UPS. It already had a prepaid label with it, which is awesome. That way I don't have to deal with uh, them or anything or somehow not IDing it properly since there's oil in there and it's considered a hazardous material. Um, but for now, we're probably going to skip over to me getting the information back and uh, closing out the video with what the analysis showed on this oil sample. So let's jump over to that. Hey, I got the oil analysis back. That was the uh, short that I put up the other day. We're going to go over actually what is the problem with my uh, engine. Or not really the problem, but I'm having a problem. Or there is an issue. Obviously, I've got 114,000 miles on it. Engine sounds fine. Runs fine. I don't have any issues there. It's not making any noises. 
I'm guessing there's no uh, damage internally, but from what I'm seeing on here, I'd imagine there's not just from, but we're gonna go over it right now. I'm gonna throw up a uh, picture on the screen. It's a scan of it, so it doesn't actually show the colors, but I will go over each section, kind of going over it with you. And I'll go over the areas that are concerning for me, uh, for my oil, and I'll go off of what I've kind of looked at online to see what uh, the areas that are an issue and try to explain some stuff and what I think uh, it means. And we'll just dive into it and just handle it from there. And I'll go over each section. What I'll do is I'll actually put a link down in the description for the oil analyzers, the, the company that did the uh, oil analysis. On their website, they have a section that actually breaks down this paper and explains each section in much greater detail and, and much better job than I'm doing. And then at the bottom of the screen, it'll actually go over the, uh, uh, oh, use, I'll use um, b -b -b soot as an example. It says in diesels, you know, this is the, you know, range of soot that's okay, this is not very good, and this is bad. So, it's, their website's got great information on there. Uh, they're, in, they won't say where it's coming from, you know, their website won't, but it may give an idea, but really, um, you need to then do some, some digging, just like I will, I'll have to do some digging on this. So, let's get into it, I'll throw up that picture, we'll go over it. So you can see at the top there, there's the account number, uh, my name, my company, then in the middle, there's uh, 2013 F-150 EcoBoost oil, and I forgot to put the manufacturer and model of the oil in there, but I know it's Motorcraft 5W30, semi-synthetic. And then we go to the right under sample information, and it says where their lab is, who did the analysis, um, the sample date, when they received it, and when they completed it. Uh, just above sample, it gives you kind of a range, and you guys can't see it, but the zero is black, the one is green, the two is an orange, the three is an orange, and the four is a red. And so that's kind of the colors and the numbers they go off of. If we come down to filter information underneath my account information, I forgot to put in the filter type, but that's a Motorcraft FL500S, I believe it is. And I will see if I can figure out the micron rating. Give me a second. Okay, so I can't find any information on what microns the FL500 is rated for. Anyway, so, since I don't have a filter, we're going to move on. There's no miscellaneous information, product information, at Motorcraft uh, 5W30. And they go over comments. Um, the comments is, check for source of fuel leak. Fuel is at a severe level. Fuel dilution may cause, be caused by component faults related to injectors, ignition timing, or excessive blow-by. Additional causes include heavy throttle application and engine lugging, frequent short trips and excessive idling. Fuel dilution has caused viscosity to decrease significantly. Significantly, Fuel dilution reduces the viscosity of the lubricant which decreases film strength and lubricity and may lead to increased wear. Fuel dilution level has most likely diluted the base number. Tin is a minor level. Tin may be coming from the piston flashing bearing overlay bronze alloy usually in combination with copper or from a Babbitt material along with copper and lead. Please provide component manufacturer, manufacturer and model to compare data to correct standards for this component. Please provide missing fluid product name to compare data to the correct standards, unit, hours, miles, kilometers not provided for the sample. Resample at half interval. So, they're saying basically they want more information that way they can compare the what their specs say. I give the information for Motorcraft SAE 5W30 
the actual uh, manufacturer and model number, I believe, um, component information, yeah, then I'd, I'd imagine what they're saying is they have actual uh, information from testing new oil. That way they can comp compare the new oil to uh, my oil that I'm giving them. But I'm not using that oil anymore, so I'm not going to worry about that. But then they go over the fuel dilution. Uh, that's a issue on mine, and then tin, and then viscosity and base uh, number on oil. So if we come down to sample under wear metals, or wait, where are we at? So under comments, you see wear metals, parts per million, and iron is at a nine, but they're saying that that's okay. There's no issues there. It's not highlighted. Uh, chromium's okay, nickel, aluminum, copper, lead, they're all okay. But then tin, you can see it's highlighted. I don't know if you guys can see. Uh, it'll be black, but there's a number two in there. And so the number two doesn't seem like much, but they've highlighted it green. And green is normal, but with uh, another issue I have going on, under go to the next row down under fuel dilution percentage I'm at a five and let me go to their website so on a gasoline engine fuel dilution normal is 2.4 percent anything we're gonna say 2.5 to 3.4 is elevated they're saying 3.5 to 4.9 is abnormal, and anything over 5% is critical. So I need to try to figure out where this fuel is coming from. Is it, you know, it, I, if you search online, you can see where uh, EcoBoost or direct injected turbocharged engines, I think, actually, I think all direct injected engines, this is an issue, is fuel dilution in the oil. There's a lot of speculation. I think uh, Engineering Explained goes over this. I'll do a link to his video down in the description. That way you can get a little information there. If you own one and you want to look into it. And let's see. Let's keep going before we go get... And then if we go to the right from fuel dilution under fuel fluid properties, viscosity tested at 100 degrees Celsius is at 7.6. And our base number is at a 1.73. Let's see. Viscosity. Minimum's a 9.3. Maximum's a 12.5. But they're saying that this is in the abnormal range. Uh, I'm going to have to do some digging on that to see why that's in. Let's go to the base number. I'll try to get a little more information. What I'll, I may do is contact oil analyzers and see if they can come back to me and give me a little more in depth. That way I can get you guys more information. Uh, I may not get it in this video, but what I'll do is I'll shoot them an email and hopefully by the next oil change and I send in my other, you know, another analysis, we will we'll try to get information back from them. Then we can get uh, definite, you know, definite explanation of this, and then we can possibly have uh, more information to go off of the next oil analysis. So, the biggest issue from going over the comments they're saying is the fuel dilution is definitely something I want to go after, and it could be the reason my tin is uh, a little high, and the tin could be coming from the piston flashing, the bearings, something like that, and then the viscosity and base oil number is definitely correlated to the fuel dilution. So I definitely want to go after this. So I think I've been thinking about the plan of action. I'm not going to do anything right now. I'm going to go the full 5,000 miles. I'm going to take an oil sample. I'll drain the oil. I'll change my full flow filter and I'll get going. And whenever we get the oil analysis back, I'll go over it again. And in that case, if my fuel is still high, my fuel dilution is still high. I think at that point, oh, catch can, catching the fuel vapors off the crankcase is a big deal. 
So maybe we're recirculating those, those fuel vapors back into the engine. So I'll either buy a, uh, a catch can or I'll build my own. I've seen a lot online, they're pretty high priced. So I'm wondering if I could build my own uh, that would be easy to drain, put somewhere. Uh, I like the one, there's there's a couple different brands, but they're small. I don't like how small they are because I've, I've emptied some of those for people that go 5,000 miles and it fills them completely up in that time. So I like the one, I think it's full race makes one that goes up on the cowl above the engine and that's pretty big and has a hose that drains. I think that's in the 500 range, uh, but it might be worth it. Uh, I may end up building one and by the time I build it and try to make it, it won't work right. And they've uh, tried that. So do anything before we have tests. That way we don't do anything and we get uh, basically mess up testing and don't know if something actually did something. So we'll probably start with a catch can and then we'll go from there. At that point, if we're still getting fuel dilution, I know that years ago I saw TSBs for the F-150 or the... I think it was the F-150 for getting fuel dilution due to the high pressure pump leaking. So at that point, we may try changing out a high pressure pump, but I want an oil analysis before we change out these parts. That way we have something to go off of and we have a, an, another oil change to go off of. We're not trying to sample it in a 500 mile range. That way we, we get things figured out. That way I can get good facts and give you guys good information. Okay. That is it. I will update you guys uh, when it comes time. I'll get another video whenever it comes around. Time for the next oil change. Uh, don't forget to like or comment on the, the video. And please consider subscribing. That, uh, that definitely lets me know if you guys are enjoying these videos. You guys are actually subscribing and uh, liking the videos. So that would be awesome if you do that. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks a lot. See you later.